Michelle's bare feet embraced the warm, dark pavement as she made her way down the middle of Millard Road. Night had fallen, but the summer sun left the blacktop warm well past the witching hour. Shoes were a commodity someone on the run could live without, but not for too long. She would find her friends, and they would play dress-up to keep her hidden, cut her hair, change the color, pick out some really bland clothes. Jesse wouldn't like the part about the clothes. She was always going on about being authentic, but she would manage for a bit. No hot pink 90s jogging outfits until we find a new place to live, okay? Fine, she thought, hitting a solid jog. Jesse didn't like hiding who she was, not one bit, but it would be a small price to pay for freedom. The fog behind her began to light up. She needed to make a quick decision before they found her, left or right. Right, Jesse said. Michelle turned her head to find a 10-foot fence. She'd never make it over in time. To the left, an empty field. She considered laying in the grass, but would likely be seen. Michelle quickened her pace. Come on, make a decision. Just ahead to the right, at the edge of the fog, she could see the outline of a fat tree. Michelle made a break for it and turned around the back, squeezing herself between the tree and the fence. The fence that was damaged. The fence which happened to have a small hook of loose link that dug into Michelle's back and caused her to cry out in pain. But the car already passed. She was alone. Michelle tried to inch forward, but the fence pulled on her skin as the link poked back through in a second spot. Her mouth swore involuntarily. Now she was stuck, like a pig, Jesse mused. But Michelle didn't find it funny. How could she with a hook through her lower back dimple like a botched suspension ring piercing? She tried to back up, but the link was curved. There wasn't much room for any clever maneuvering. Terrible blinding pain shot through her nerves. Even putting her full weight against the tree for a rest pulled a little too much. She belonged to the fence now. Michelle was losing blood, making its way between her butt cheeks and down her leg. How long would she be here, behind the tree? The sun would be coming up soon. Cars would start to arrive, but the pain drained her energy more quickly than the blood. Would she make it that long? Jesse, help, she pleaded. You know I can't. I don't have magical powers. I don't have a body, unless you count this piece of trash. Jesse never spoke to her this way before. But something about this place changed her. When the pills weren't actively keeping them apart, the mood swings would. They needed to get back to the way things were. Michelle bent her elbow to finger the hook in her back, covering her hand in syrupy blood, the sight of which made her knees a bit weak, which pulled again on the hook. She just wanted to be with Jesse. That's what started this whole thing. They met on her 28th birthday. Jesse came to her charged Michelle's body in a way she never experienced before, her arms lifting and embracing her own body, and a voice filling her mind. I'm Jesse. Who are you? They spent weeks, months, secretly getting to know each other in Michelle's mind. And then finally, one day, with nerves enough for both of them, Michelle decided to tell her parents she had fallen in love with a woman was dead. The fog began to light up again with the headlights of a white car, a paddy wagon from the hospital. They would never see her. The trunk of the tree kept Michelle hidden from the road. What do we do, Jesse? Michelle's voice shook and squeaked. The new Jesse liked that sound. Oh, my love. We're gonna have to pull until it comes out.
Good evening, world, and welcome to Haunting Season. The theme of the month is insanity. We're going to be talking about the history of insanity and how it's been treated, the current understanding of insanity, and if it's even relevant uh, term anymore, and if and then we'll pontificate on the future of insanity. It, it is March Madness. We have all either lost our minds or are very close to it. I don't think I'm the only one here who has like found themselves dancing in the kitchen, no music at all, or going to the refrigerator eight times an hour. I'm pretty sure March Madness is a basketball thing. What's the fun in that? This is haunting season. <laughs> we are we are people of the macabre. We are the people of the different. We are the people. We embrace the the strange. Yeah, sure. Let's embrace March Madness. I wore uh you know this little robe just to you What's know. What's it say? And, well, it says the cable guy. It's from a, a movie. I don't know if we can show that exactly, but this is uh, something. This is like a rap gift from uh, the cable guy, the movie with Ben Stiller and yeah. Jimmy Carey. Yeah. That, I call him Jimmy. Right on point. That's total insanity, that movie. Totally. Have you ever been in a psych ward? <laughs> yes, I was uh, in a famous and, uh, well, uh, oh my quite gosh. horrific uh, asylum. And this was called Briarcliff. I was... A the chronic, chronic masturbator, masturbator. and Ameri Amer American Horror Story. So yes and no. So that's obviously film and television. But before we get to the fictional side of things, I want to know some of the dark history of psychiatric facilities because that's the truly horrific stuff, right? If anyone would like to join me uh, to the world of 1250, into 12. the year 1250, there's no Googles. There is there is no ticky talks. There are no internets. There are there are no cars. You're in a different world. You yeah. might not even have education. Let's say you had a speech impediment. Okay. You would be put into an asylum. And what wow. they would do immediately, the first thing they do is say, hey, welcome to the asylum. We will take out all your teeth. Oh, what? great. Perfect. Yeah, that makes sense, right? But how's that the first thing that they do? They thought like infections were the cause of problems. Like, oh, this caused the speech impediment. This caused learning, learning disability. And then if that didn't work, they'd try the bloodletting. And if that didn't work, they'd say, um, oh, uh, here, chap. Oh, I think we've got the answer for you. It's nothing major, nothing serious. It's yeah. just called rotational therapy. What is that? Uh, it's just it's just a minor procedure. We'll put you, we'll tie you to a chair, and we're gonna spin you around for hours and hours and hours, and that should cure you. You should be much better, but you can't leave. You won't be leaving here. Well, like a like a space cadet training. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean uh, that's like a I mean, that, that, like, language. But that's insane, dear boy. This was like some of the the, the like proper procedures that you would do like you if you had like a speech impediment if you had like seizures if you had any sort of malfunction wrong with you we're going to spin you in the chair we're going to yeah, take, we'll take out your teeth and you're going and then we're going to take out your uh you know your gallbladder and then we're going to put you in the chair What's and take you for a ride bladder? and it, it it like doesn't like stop there there's other places in in uh the united states as well yeah. Uh, Jersey, where you're from, I, like for some reason, Jersey's freaking loaded with stuff. Like, like all these asylums. There's a place in Jersey Not that just asylums, just like weird shit in general. Like, I, I don't know if you know this, but like hugely, hugely popular publication in New Jersey is Weird New Jersey, and there's just issue after issue after issue of like thick pages of like all the urban legends of New Jersey. It's like it may be the most urban legendy place. Wow. What a place to grow up. No, 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 it's no wonder we're here on haunting season, right? I know. I feel like I could have an entire TikTok and never run out of content if I just did Weird New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, from Jersey. But there's like one of many asylums out there in Jersey that like as soon as like you were like admitted and they wouldn't just like take somebody who was like, oh, they're, you know, crazy or they're insane. It would just be like, hey, just welcome aboard. We'll take immigrants. We'll take orphans. We'll take whatever. And then we will just cut you up. We'll take out your ovaries. How uh, much that control would, do you have over that? Like none. Well, right? Nothing. You're you're completely turned over to them. You are their property. And And here's also the other thing is these places are still standing. 
Gay Morgan here is saying she's from Australia. She says uh, all these places are kind of still standing. There's heaps of them in America, England, Australia, Germany. So this is like globally, we kind of like really screwed up the early ages of uh, mental illness here. Or anybody with any sort of like something that wasn't deemed normal. Like if, if, you know, if you had a limp or if you had like some sort of like whatever your ailment was, you were just usually cast off in one of these asylums. Topeka uh, State Hospital in Kansas, they allowed, Kansas State said, hey, anyone who's got a mental illness will be castrated. So they just, and uh, they later found out- Do they know where the brain is? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's in the wrong area. You're thinking, yeah, yeah. So m- they later found out most of these people didn't even have any sort of mental illness that they were just put in because they were criminals or they had been like, you know, immigrants or whatever. And they were just like, come on in here, chop, chop it off. Enjoy your stay here for the rest of your life. You know, I mean, that is just barbaric. Dear Lord, yeah, Colby Crow here is saying even women women with severe periods got accused of being insane. That's true. And they would treat them with like uh, heroin or cocaine. So now they've had to adjust to this kind of new life and then also get hooked on to cocaine and heroin. Yeah, which could I mean that would make anyone insane. Crazy. It oh, just I, seems like it's endless. Yeah, and you know, and like looking up stuff for this episode and doing some research, it it just seems like there are endless darkly creative forms of torture that haunt our history as like um, human beings when it comes to treating mental illness. Um, Electroshock therapy is one we didn't mention. Lengthy restraining, like people just like in straight jackets or like strapped to tables, Uh, sensory deprivation in padded rooms, nakedness. You know, we were laughing earlier when we saw like this article that was like nakedness, bedlam in London, you know, but like think of how humiliating and awful it would be to just be have to be naked because it's easier to clean you. Now you will be humiliated and abused for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. And Apocalypse Meow said here earlier, I'm ready for an old school lobotomy. Hook me up. Lobotomies. (laughs) You can't talk about asylums and leave that one out. Just turning someone into a living vegetable. There is a solution. And then just across the board, just like horrifically poor and filthy living conditions, just like disgusting, disgusting buildings. Um, Overpopulated and just uh, falling apart. But you know what the scariest thing for me out of all of this is? Is I feel like none of the doctors knew at all what was wrong with anyone. It was almost like a fun experiment. Like they were just experimenting and being like, well, here, uh, take this or here, let's just remove this or let me put this down your ear. You know, yeah, or like, through oh. your eyeball. Yeah. I feel like we jumped the gun a little bit. Can we just like go back and get a basic definition and like an origin of the term insane? Here's what I did, Josh. I looked up, I Googled, I Googled, and I found that the word like insane, it comes from like the Latin word sanius. 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 So How's it, it means, uh, well, it's spelled uh, S A N U S. Sanus. <laughs> it's sanus. 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 Yeah, sanus. So you're so saying not insanus. sanus. The funny thing is yeah. it was not really a so it just meant not healthy. And they would they would associate it with like maybe say an ox, or they would associate it, they would not attribute it to a a, a human being. Would they remove the ox's teeth? No. Well, no. It would just meant like, oh, someone's not healthy or some this this okay. thing, this being is not healthy. But it wasn't until like the late 1700s that it became a way to describe a human being is like, oh, they are insane. The word insane feels like kind of outdated, insane, crazy, right? Like those words are like kind of triggering. They really bring up some stuff when you think about it. Um, And, you know, my work at Believe Limited, I do a lot with mental health. And while I, I think horror in general is a great platform for talking about mental health and mental health awareness and advocacy. And I thought, uh, you know, let's not blow this. Let's get it right. And so you know what I did? Oh my gosh. I Googled it. You Googled, you Googled it, you Googled it. And what'd you find? Well, let me tell you, there are a handful of words that we're actively trying to steer away from for the sake of not stigmatizing or degrading people with mental health issues or disorders or differences, what have you. Um, So we're working to avoid the words insane, crazy, psycho, 
and nuts, words like that. And instead we're replacing them with uh, things like silly, atypical, erratic, antisocial, irrational, and my personal favorite, preposterous. Preposterous. Well, that is the suggested word. You know, Cody, you're being a little preposterous. Uh, I like that. It means absolutely contrary to nature, reason, or common sense. So that's kind of fun. Okay. So we talked a little bit about the history, but now, now I feel like we're talking about the present. What, what are things like now? Most of those places that I mentioned earlier that were opened up in the way back times, like in the 1800s and even back to the, like they were operating until like the 1990s and they've shut, they've shut down. You know, these, these are now buildings that you can go if you're a ghost hunter and you're adventurous and you might like risk an arrest, you can go visit these places. But however, they shut them down due to reforms. And so they've made like certain attempts to make them more you know it's got a long ways to go long ways to go sure. there's funding i mean a lot of us can't even get freaking health care you know it's it's unavailable yeah. so, but what the goal is is uh for most of these things is to get people educated rehabilitated and possibly medicated and then back out into society i think as a society we're getting better about talking about mental health in general I feel like Gen X and millennials were the first generations to really start talking openly about mental health and depression and suicide and all that. Uh, now we're getting to the point where it's not taboo to have a therapist. It's not taboo to need medicine or get help in any way. And, and the best part about talking about all this stuff so much is it equips us to be better at dealing with mental health emergencies. I would hope that if you're feeling in crisis, Cody, that you would call me and, and I'd just be like, it's okay, man. Like we're gonna work through this together as opposed to like, you're nuts, let me take your teeth out. <laughs> or me having like, I can't talk to anybody about this because I'm the only one that's experiencing this and I, I'm the only one that understands this and and Josh would not understand this at all. Yeah, like, yeah, no, the, the you are not like, alone is like kind of a cliche, but you are not alone is also like the greatest thing to hear. I've mentioned before that I deal with seasonal depression and, um, yeah, it really does feel like you're the only person going through this and no one would understand. And just having someone be like, dude, I get it. I haven't been off my couch in like two weeks. I'd be like, oh my God, yes. And you can start a conversation. We're doing our best to be mental health advocates and and to share our journeys openly uh, on the show. Um, and I mentioned, you know, my work at Believe Limited and, and we have this podcast called the Bloodstream Podcast, which is uh, primarily targeted towards people with bleeding disorders. But in March, every Thursday, I'm putting out an episode a week about mental health. We're talking about depression, isolation, imposter syndrome and trauma. So if you want to hear more of that stuff and check out what I'm doing over there, it's Bloodstream Podcast on Thursdays this March. Uh, the first episode dropped yesterday, and we'll have some links in the description if anyone wants to check that out or needs to reach out for help or want some resources. It's just a you know great spot to kind of get all of that stuff. So just want to make sure to fit that in because uh, I do think it's really important to keep the conversation going. But, sure. but... I showed up today specifically for the scary stuff, Cody. So yeah, um, I mean, it's a haunting season, John. Yeah, hit me, hit, me, hit me with some of that scary modern day preposterous stuff. Oh, uh, okay. Got. Well, if we're gonna do that, we have to go back to the past. All right. So there's a place, and I've now become like obsessed with this place. It's in West Virginia, and it's very popular. I'm sure everybody knows who's watching it. It's a trans Allegheny lunatic asylum. It's in West Virginia, and it's been around forever. It's notorious for like hauntings and you know, shadowy figures, doors slamming shut, all the stuff you would associate with like a, 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 an asylum. There's this ghost of this little girl named Lily and she was born in the asylum and raised in the asylum. And then she died at a very young age. And so now there's like all these reports of, you know, if you walk on certain levels and certain halls, you can hear her and she's looking for like a playmate. And then like, if you bring dolls and stuff, you see like dolls move. It's like really, you gotta really- bring Edgar really, there. Yeah, they would, they would become, uh, they would It'd be best wow. friends. Eddie. But here's the other funny thing is that they open it up uh, for ghost hunts. And it's like cool. guided ghost hunts. And not only that, in the month of October, they have an asylum haunted house inside 
the place. Shut up. Come on. Okay. Post COVID, po- post posturous, we are absolutely going there in October. There's no <laughs> reason not to. Oh my gosh, absolutely. There was one near where I grew up in New Jersey called Greystone Hospital. Um, Jersey, of course. Yeah. And after visiting Hilltop a few times, we decided that we wanted an upgrade, you know, something scarier. So after hearing some stories from local bullshitters, um, we hopped in the car and drove to Greystone. So Gravestone was an active facility, but there was a huge part of the building that had been closed down due to disrepair and being generally outdated. Um, I think it was originally built in the 1800s and it, it was just like one of those massive ones. You know, when you see the uh, the bird's eye view of these places, sometimes they're just like zigzags for miles. Um, so I, I was told it was built for overflow from the Trenton Lunatic Asylum, which like, wow, how about that for a name? Yeah. Um, Lunatic, that's another one we probably shouldn't Should use. Probably canceled. Can't, you're canceled, lunatic. Yeah. Um, but I'm getting lost here in the details. So the, the, the rumor we heard was that there was an escaped patient in the abandoned parts of the hospital, and she was impossible for the orderlies to catch. And if you could get into the property at night, which, you know, it was like pre-9-11, so it wasn't that hard, um, you could enter the decrepit building and wander to your heart's content, unless... Of course, you came upon the escaped patient. And? Well, it's a long story. Oh my God! Wait, are you are you doing, you're doing another cliffhanger? This is a cliffhanger. I want to hear the end of this stuff. I I mean, hear, what did you What did you find? What did you see? What did you hear? I I I mean, if you've watched the Hilltop story, my very first story. Um, and we did an archive episode about it, you'll know that I just get scared when things are dark and quiet and there are sounds around. So it's lots of like dripping water and like pans getting kicked by accident and stuff. But I I don't know, should I write it into a story? Yes. (laughs) Getting off track once again. What, who, you know, I'm not surprised. But so we talked a little bit about the past. We talked a little bit about the present. Before we get to the future, I have this burning question in the back of my mind. You know, when uh, someone's guilty, of like a murder or something, but they plead insanity. That always seemed like a really weird loophole, you know? But at the same time, it it doesn't feel like it's better than the other thing. When did that whole thing start? Well, it's so weird, Josh. You know, I I actually did a Google on this and I found out that ancient Roman and, uh, you know, the the Greek, ancient Greek times, it was just like, oh, someone doesn't have an intelligent quotient enough to you know, stand trial. So they would just be like, okay, this person is unable to, you know, properly function. Now in colonial America, colonial America didn't give a shit. You could be like apeshit crazy. And they would be like, they're dead. Shoot them. There was no separation. But in, in England during like the 14th century, Edward II put these things and he's like, he like put it basically saying if a human uh, person doesn't have the emotional or mental capacity of a wild beast, you're sent to an asylum, which doesn't sound like too much fun sitting in a chair for four and a half hours spinning. No, especially if you have the mental capacity of a wild beast. What do you What do you think is worse? Uh, you know, death death row or psych ward for the rest oh, of your life? Baseball bat to the head or a knife to the eye? Like what What would you <laughs> rather What would you rather do? I, I feel like criminals who uh, who plead insanity must think that they are smart enough to trick the system. Their their game plan must be like, I'll just go there, I'll make friends with some people, you know, who are weird. I'll play cards, I'll I'll win cigarettes, and I'll pretend I'm insane, and I'll avoid all the the you know the horrible treatment by just like showing progress and like getting better. Yeah. But the, the reality is, is like you get trapped there and you you don't really have control yeah. you start taking the pills and ugh. um yeah. i've seen a lot of stuff in the comments too about how like we're not we're not really there yet it can be really difficult to get uh mental help um and that the hospitals and you know it's a shame that they shut down these old hospitals because now things are you know it's hard to find a bed things are still overrun and um you know even though treatment and the philosophy behind the treatment might be better. It looks like, um, you know, things maybe haven't quite gotten there yet. Like, uh, how do you see this getting, like, worse? How bad could it be? Um, yeah, how well, bad can it be? 
yeah okay so um you know COVID continues to mutate it turns into a zombie apocalypse and we then um take are most insane and we strap weapons to them and send them out to fight the zombies. The CDC did give something out about uh, zombies. You put me on the spot. I, yeah, I know. That's what I'm thinking about it. The CDC was like, hey, just in case this turns into a zombie apocalypse. Here, here's here's my worst case scenario is yeah. we, we continue to live, live our lives. And then when we die, we wake up and this is all like a figment of our imagination. And we wake up in like Bedlam in 1847. And, you know, we're completely out and we're like, holy Jesus, what? But we're lobotomized. We've got no spleens. We've got no test. We've got nothing. We've got nothing to it. We've got no teeth, Josh. And we're just sitting there like, and all of this was just like, we're making it up this is not even real this is not this is all a simulation your dreams can feel very real and nothing is real unless your brain says it is you know yeah i i suppose so one of the things i really 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 love about having a fear of the month on our show is being able to cram in as many relevant movies as possible throughout the month. Uh, and since our word is insanity, Cody, which, you know, we're maybe now changed to preposterous. Um, I took a look at some incredible horror movies and so did you that take place in asylums or have insane people in them. Uh, so here's our suggestions for the month of March. Uh, you want to ping pong this? I'll, I'll give one, see if you've seen it. You go, you go ahead. Okay. Uh, Gothica. Never seen it. What? Halle I've Berry. never seen it. I might have watched parts of it, but I've never seen it in its entirety. Halle Berry, Cody. Oh, Jesus. All right. Yeah. I'll put it on my must watch list. Here's the set. I just got to set this one up. So here's the setup. She is working at a psychiatric facility. Boom, table turns. She's in the psychiatric facility. Great movie. Great movie. So I'm going to have to probably give that thing a watch here in the month of March Madness. Yes. Yeah. Now I'm getting worried. If you haven't seen that one, you definitely haven't seen. Oh. Somebody's I'm unqualified. Over. I'm unqualified is what you're saying. Uh, Maybe you might be, Cody. Uh, <laughs> well, currently for a replacement uh, in the chat, if you would like to be Cody's replacement. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one, and this really, this will really get me off the show in a second. Is Amadeus, and it's like That's really a like movie. I know it's it's a backstory, but I remember as a kid it's watching good, it for the first time. It's a beautiful movie about uh you know Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and Salieri. It's based on a play, whatever. It's probably early 1800s in Vienna, Austria, and he attempts suicide, Salieri, and so he ends up in this uh, mental institution, and so he this priest he wants to tell this priest to like confess his, his sins. And all this kind of stuff. But then at the very end, they wheel them out. And like there's these guys chained to a wall. They're like laying in hay. They're all naked. Like they're being humiliated. Nakedness. And and he's like praising them. He's saying, like, oh, I'm your I'm your patron saint. I'm the patron saint of mediocrity. And he's being wheeled <laughs> down these like corridors. It's like so spooky. But it was like it stuck with me forever. All right. Uh Nightmare on Elm Street three, Dream Warriors. Yeah. This is like one of my all-time favorite horror movies now. It's good. Yeah, Patricia Arquette, young Patricia Arquette, young, oh. thin, tall, handsome Larry <laughs> Fishburne. Fishburne. Yeah, of course. I, I love Nightmare on Elm Street. I love all the, all the Nightmare on Elm Streets. But also, Hello, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. It's a phenomenal. And they're bringing it back uh, or what? brought it back. It's a oh, series right. uh, ratcheted. Right. That nurse ratchet. That looks yeah. scary. I haven't seen it at all, but it looks looks pretty scary. Neither uh, have you heard of Amherst Asylum? No. So I didn't either, but it was on this top 10 list of like greatest asylum movies. And I was like, okay, Ben Kingsley, Michael Caine, is it Kate Beckinsale who does the underworld movies? Yeah. Yeah, she's in it. Um, a, bu a bunch of people in it. Lots of twists and turns. Don't look up anything about it because um, it's just like a great, one of those great roller coaster rides. Every single one of our episodes, we've mentioned one movie and one movie always uh, Halloween. Hello. Hello. Yeah. We got to throw that one out. Whoa. That's that's a good one. Uh, good one Session movie. nine, I just rewatched. That one was surprisingly good. It's got um, that guy from CSI Miami. David Caruso. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, I'll have to revisit that one because I I do remember it having like a lot of buzz, and I, I just I I just can't remember it. Um, one I I was thinking about, I was like, oh my god, what, there's one that I I remember watching and being haunted by, and it's called it's a Sam Fuller movie. It's a black and white movie. It's from 1963. It's called uh, Shock Corridor, and there's like three cases inside this. I love Sam Fuller. I think he's one of my favorite directors of all time, but. It takes place inside this asylum. It just chaos is is all around every single corner, and it's just a really, really good flick. I gotta watch that one. I didn't even hear that one. It kind of reminds me a little bit of my my last one on the list here, which is Asylum, uh, which is a 1972 movie. I put this one on because I legitimately thought it would maybe be one of the worst movies of all time, like from the cover, from the stuff that I read about it. I loved this movie. The setup is that there's a guy who uh, he's brand new working at the psychiatric facility and in order to fill the requirements to start his job, he's got to interview four of the patients and basically hear their backstory. So, you know, you guessed it. We now have four short horror films that we're going to watch. And the cool thing about it is because it takes place inside of a psychiatric facility, you remove like all the restrictions of anything making any sense. It just is like really creative. Um, I don't want to ruin anything because like yeah. even there is some like pretty dumb stuff in this movie. Um, even the dumb stuff is just like so fun to have revealed to you. Like I spent half the movie just going like, are you kidding me? What? <laughs> so much fun. Wow. Lots to watch. If you don't know what some of these are um, and you want some more movie suggestions, I'm doing them all the time on our TikTok. Uh, every Sunday I'm doing a movie uh, review. Um, indefinitely and i'm just going to keep it on theme for whatever the theme of the month is so i'm going to do four insane asylum movies that give like a, you know no spoilers but set you up for like a really fun watch uh so if you haven't checked out our hunting season tiktok i'd encourage you to do it it's like a mini version of the show i'm posting every day on there and it's not just clips from this show in fact it's largely original content that you don't get on youtube so uh yeah oh, go watch my tiktok uh, that's it for our show this evening. We're going to hang on here after the credits and chat with anyone who wants to continue the conversation for a few minutes. Uh, so yeah, subscribe on your favorite platform. We're a podcast, we're a YouTube show, or we're, we're now on Twitch. We're now on Twitter. Uh, I don't know. Just if you like the show, like show us some love and uh, yeah, let's roll the credits. Hunting Season was created by me, Joshua Sterling Gregg. Produced by Greg Holdsman and Jessica Richmond. And executive produced by Matt Gielen, Patrick James Lynch, and Ryan Gielen. And is a joint production of Believe Limited and Matt Gielen. This episode was written and hosted by Cody Dugan and Joshua Sterling Gregg. It was edited by Colby Crow. And select music in this episode was made exclusively for the podcast by North Innsbruck. If you like our show, please subscribe on your favorite platform. We have a video version of the show on YouTube and Facebook. Facebook and audio versions on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. Is that good? Oh boy.